Now we have transitioned to the acquisition phase as indicated by the phase bar at the top of the screen. On this screen, there are a few things to note. On the far left is the camera view. And when the camera is being used, this is where you will see what the camera sees. Below the camera view is our step bar and this gives us the option to scan or to shoot a video or take a picture with the camera. This is handy if you wanna document something you see with the camera or you want to use the camera to aid in patient education. We're gonna leave this on the scan option at this time. Also on this screen at the bottom left of the screen is our catalogs. Currently we see a catalog for the lower jaw, the upper jaw, and the buckle scan. The lower jaw is selected and this is where our scan of the lower jaw will be located when completed. If at any point you scan the wrong jaw into the wrong catalog, you can simply drag and drop it to the correct location. If you do not like your scan and you wanna start a new scan, simply right click on the catalog and delete the scan. To the right side of the screen is the tools menu, indicated by a circle icon. When you click the tools menu, you only see an option at this time to cut the model. This allows you to remove a section of the scan. So here's an example of when I would use this tool. Let's say I just gave the patient anesthetic and I'm waiting to start the procedure. Well, that's a perfect time to go ahead and start scanning some things while I'm waiting. So I go ahead and put all my administration data in if I haven't done so already, and then start scanning the mouth. Personally, I like to scan the buccal bite registration prior to anesthesia. This is so I can get the most accurate bite possible. I then go ahead and I scan the upper and lower jaws after anesthesia before I prep the tooth. Then, using the cut tool, I cut out the tooth I plan to prep. After I prep the tooth, I simply rescan the initial scanned image and pick up the new information of the prep. You can also use the cut tool to remove any extra information you may have picked up during the scan accidentally. Occasionally, someone scans a finger or cheek or lip in the scan, and that is information that can be removed prior to making the digital models. Many times this extra information that you accidentally capture slows down the system when transitioning to the model phase. Below the tools menu is a button that allows you to add a catalog if desired, indicated by the square with a plus sign icon. This is where you would add a catalog or additional scan if you were doing a biogeneric copy design mode. This is also necessary to add a catalog when working with designing implant restorations. I frequently like to add a biocopy of the jaw I plan to prep. For example, if we are prepping number 30, I would scan the jaw prior to the prep. I would then copy the lower jaw catalog and move a copy of that scan to the newly added biocopy lower catalog. I would then cut out the tooth I'm going to prep on the lower jaw catalog and rescan the prep when finished. Later in the design phase, I can turn on the biocopy of the lower jaw and actually see my restoration I am designing, actually see if that is similar to what the patient originally started with. If you have any questions about this process, be sure to ask me and we can cover that more later. For this exercise, since the model is already prepped, we will not be using a biocopy catalog. Okay, so at this point, now that we are oriented to the screen, let's talk about some scanning considerations. When doing a scan on the actual patient, the teeth should remain dry during the scanning process. I prefer to use an Optrigate to retract the lips and an Isolite or Isodry for this part of the process to help keep things dry. If your margins are close to the gingiva, you should consider packing cord, not only to keep the tissues off your margins and to help with hemostasis, but to give some contrast to the digital image for later when we mark our finish line of the restoration. Alternatively, you can use other modes of tissue management based on your personal preference. When you scan, you start scanning from the front and move towards the back, or you can start at the back and move towards the front whatever you prefer, and this is entirely up to you. Whatever you choose, 
Try to start your scan on the occlusal surface if possible. As you are scanning, you will see the live scanning process on the left side of the screen. On the right side of the screen, the digital model will begin to form as you scan. The white highlighted area is where the image capture is taking place. When you scan, keep moving the camera around, filling in all relevant non-captured areas. I would recommend that until you get the hang of scanning, that you focus on looking at the camera, moving in the mouth, as opposed to watching it on the computer screen. Now, personally, I prefer to start the scan on the occlusal surface at the most distal tooth in the arch. I then scan the occlusal surfaces of the quadrant up to the midline. I then rotate to the facial surfaces and go from the front to the back. At the back of the mouth, I rotate to the lingual and then proceed to scan from back to front. I then check my scans and I look for any areas that need to be rescanned. On the front and bottom of the Cirac machine is a gray foot pedal. Scanning can be started and paused by upward pressured on the foot pedal control for one click. When the camera is paused, the digital model on the right side of the screen can be rotated and evaluated. If more scanning is required, simply reactivate the foot pedal to fill in the needed voids. When you are scanning a preparation, make sure that all margins and proximal surfaces of adjacent teeth are filled in. If you notice any voids, return to scanning. Voids on the lingual are not as critical as voids on the buckle. To capture some voids, you may need to rotate or tilt the camera to get a better angle. Make sure that adequate buckle soft tissue is incorporated into your upper and lower jaw scans. You need adequate capture of the buckle because when you do your buckle bite scan, the software will orient the models using all of this available data from the buckle scans. If you are using a overhead light in your operatory, it's also not a bad idea to turn it away from the mouth while you are scanning so the excess light does not flood the image and interfere with the camera's ability to see the teeth more easily. Sometimes your camera may start to fog in the mouth and it is a good idea to have your assistant blow some air onto the camera if this starts to happen. All right, so let's go ahead and start scanning some models. For this example, I'm going to scan number 30. Using the lower jaw model, I will pick up the camera, activate the camera with the foot pedal, and start scanning. As I mentioned earlier, I personally like to start at the back of the mouth and move along the occlusal surface towards the front of the mouth. While you're scanning, you will hear music or a sound depending on what your machine is set up to play. The sound is a feedback mechanism telling you if you are scanning good or bad. If you start to move too fast or if the camera gets out of focus, the sound will change to a high pitched sound or different sound. When this happens, simply go back to where you were in the scan when it was still scanning well and pick up where you left off. Most of the time you are moving too fast, you're too far away from the teeth, or the lens is starting to fog up. I always like to scan up to the midline when working in the back. At a minimum, I would at least scan up to the canine. Once you're finished with your occlusal scan, you can roll the camera to the buckle or lingual and do another swipe down the arch. Now as I swipe down the buckle, notice that as I move towards the back of the mouth, I am also moving the camera slightly up towards the crown of the teeth and down towards the vestibule. I do this so I can capture as much of the buckle as I can. After I have the buckle, I then roll the camera onto the occlusal and then onto the lingual, making one last swipe up the lingual side of the arch. Once I think I have my arch scanned, I can turn off the camera and take a look at the digital model. Take a good look at the model and see if you notice any voids. When I scan these models, I often notice a void where I have no data on the proximal view of the adjacent teeth. If you see a void, simply turn the camera back on and try to recapture that voided area using different camera angulations. Once we have our lower jaw scan, we can now select the upper jaw catalog and start scanning the upper jaw. A little tip when you are scanning models is to double check that you are in fact scanning the correct side of the upper jaw. 
I've seen many people scan the wrong side and then the models will not orient themselves later in the model phase. So just double check to save yourself the trouble of rescanning an arch later. So again, when you are scanning the upper jaw, just make sure that you check the scan for possible voids and rescan any areas that you may have missed. After we have our upper jaw scan, we can now move on to our buccal scan. As I mentioned earlier, personally, I prefer to do this prior to anesthesia and before I scan the upper and lower arches. In this example, we are going to do this scan last. For the buccal scan, your patients, or model in this case, are in maximum intercuspation. You are only scanning the buccal teeth and soft tissue. This scan is used for orientation purposes and to document teeth contacts as well. When doing this on a patient, make sure that they are biting down all the way and do not move during the scan. I ask the patient to bite firmly and hold that bite until I'm finished. On a patient, biting firmly helps to compress the PDL and makes for a tighter bite. This will result in less occlusal adjustments during delivery. Go ahead and put your models in MIP and start scanning as you did for the upper and lower jaw scans. For this buckle scan, I like to move up and down to capture the top and bottom teeth and soft tissue as I move anteriorly or posteriorly. Now that we have all of our scans we need, it is time to move to the next step. But first, let's go ahead and save our progress. I've been burned a couple of times where I advanced far into this process and the system had an issue and it crashed. If the software crashes, all data is lost unless you save. I would recommend you save a couple of times through the fabrication process. I personally like to save after every phase in the phase bar. At a minimum, I would save once after scanning and once after you design. Maybe even save after you work on your models if you had to spend a lot of time tracing the margin or trimming the models. After we save, you can either hit the arrow button at the bottom of the screen or click on model in the phase menu. 